In this example, we're going to show you how to draw the vectors required to build the nameplate that you can see on screen here. We're going to demonstrate the use of the snapping features to help create and align our vectors. We will also look at using the Draw Text tool to access system fonts for the nameplate title. And then we're also going to look at how we can use the powerful node editing tools to manually change the shape of vectors that we have already created. So let's go to file and we'll close that down and then we're going to go and create a new file so create a new file we're working with a single sided setup here the width of this is going to be 8.5 the height of my job is going to be 2.5 material thickness that we're working with is going to be an eighth of an inch so 0.125 working in inches z0 position we're going to set that on the material surface XY datum position, we want that in the center of our job. We could go ahead and press OK. Now as this is a drawing exercise, I just want to take a moment to review my snap options. So to access my snap options, I go to edit, snap options, or I could use the keyboard shortcut, which is F4. Now I'll open the snap options dialog box. Okay, so here we're going to work with the default settings. We're going to have geometry snapping on, smart snapping on. And you'll see how we make use of both of these features throughout this video. Snap radius, we're going to go for the default in the middle. And we could go ahead and press OK. Now the first item we're going to draw is a rectangle that's going to represent the outside of our nameplate. So to draw a rectangle, we come over to create vectors. And then we can use the draw rectangle icon here. And so here we're presented with various options in the form in order for me to create the rectangle. I want the centre of my rectangle to be in the centre of my job and I can see that would be x0, y0. So I'm going to make sure that the values in these boxes are at x0 and y at 0 here. Corner type, so we can choose from a square corner like shown in this image here or we could go for a radius external or radius internal. Now as you've seen in the intro there, our outer vector had a radius external corner, so we're going to choose that type. Let me specify the radius for that corner. In this case we're going to go with 0 0.1. Next thing to do is change the size of the rectangle that you want to create. So in this case we're going to go 7.75 and then for the height of that, we're going to go with 1.75 in there. Press create. You'll see it's created that rectangle based on the settings that we've input in that form. So let's close that down. The next thing I'd like to do is look at creating drill holes that are going to sit in each one of these corners. So to do that, we're going to look at drawing a circle. So let's go to the draw circle option. So in here we're going to specify a circle either by inputting the radius or the diameter. In this case we're going to go with the diameter. Now my diameter is going to be 1 16th of an inch. So the nice thing about the software is that I can input calculations into these boxes. So to do that I can type in 1 slash 16 and then if I hit the equals key it's going to give me the numerical value. So now what I can do is I can use my cursor to position my circle into a place within my job. Now the nice thing about having the geometry snapping on is it enables me to snap to arc centers. So where we created the radius corners on the rectangle, I should be able to snap to those center points. You'll see I'm snapping there, my cursor's changed to that snap point. I can click and position my circle in place. Come down here. See, we've snapped in place there, so I can click, and let's put that in there. Come over to the right hand side, snapping in place, click there, and to the bottom right, snap in place. You can see I now have my four drill holes in the corner of my rectangle. So let's go and close that down. And so now, what we want to do is we want to look at creating the internal border for our nameplate. So to do that, we're going to come back into the Draw Rectangle option. Now this time, we're actually going to work with Radius Internal Corners. So let's select that option there. Again, we're going to go to the Radius of 0.1. I'm 
Now rather than me input values into the form for the size of the rectangle, I'm actually going to draw it out by snapping to the centre points of two circles. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to snap to that circle there, drag a box out, snap to the circle there, and you'll see it's created that rectangle for me with my internal radius corners there. And I'm happy with the way that that looks. So let's go ahead and just close that form down. So now I'd like to think about inserting some text for my nameplate. So let's go over to this icon here to draw text. And in here we specify the text that you want to create. In this case I'm going to type in vector phone. Now we need to select what type of font, true type or single line. In this case we're going to go with true type. You'll see that I have a drop down menu of all the fonts that I currently have on my system. To search for a particular font, for this example, I want to use the brush script font. I can start to type in the word brush, so B R U, and you'll see it's currently got that highlighted. It's just a nice, easy way for me to locate fonts that I know the names of. Okay, so I'm just going to select that font there. Then we can choose whether we want that bold or italic. I don't want either of these options checked. Then we could choose our text alignment. In this case, I want that in the center. Specify a text height. So for the height of this text, we're going to go with one inch. And I could go ahead and press apply. You'll see that it's just brought that into my job there. So then I can close that down. So I'm going to select that text there. I'm just going to take it from the center and drag that into the center of my job. You can see that I'm aligned there as I've got that snap icon. It's telling me we're snapping to that center point. Now the software allows us to transform the text in many ways. If you're not happy with the spacing in between each of these characters, we can edit the text spacing and curve. To do that, we come over to this icon over here, Edit Text Spacing and Curve, or sometimes we refer to it as kerning. So I'm just going to click in there, and that's put it into Edit Text Spacing mode. Now whilst my text is highlighted, I'm going to use this option here to zoom Active View to Selected Vectors. This is just so that I can see each of these characters a little better. Now you'll notice that uh, my cursor has a T next to it. So that's telling me that we are in the kerning mode. And if I come over in between two characters, you'll see that my cursor is now changed. And we currently have two arrows pointing at each other. So if I click now, you'll see that the spacing is decreased and we're bringing the two characters closer together. And I could come over and do that for various other characters that we may have in my text. And then to create more spacing, or to increase the space between two letters, what I could do is simply come over, hold down shift, and you'll see now that the arrows are in opposing directions. So now I can click, and it's just going to increase that space in there. Okay, so I like the way that we've got our text spaced out there. So to come out of this mode, we simply come over into normal selection mode. Let's use this option here to zoom to fit. When using this type of font, we would like to carve out the text as if it was one continuous word. Now at the moment, this would not happen because the letters do not form one continuous line. So to accomplish this, we would need to transform the text object to standard vectors and then look at welding them together to form one continuous vector. At the moment, we can still edit the text using the text tool options, but once we've converted the text to normal vectors, we will no longer be able to do this. So as long as we're happy with the spacing that we have, we can go ahead and convert the text to vectors. So to do that, we simply take that text, right click, use the option here, convert to curves. And you'll see now what's happened, it's just converted each one of those characters into its own individual vector. Now the next step is to look at welding all of the overlapping characters together in order for us to form one continuous vector. So to do that, I'm simply going to just select all of the overlapping vectors. One way of doing this is just simply by dragging from right to left. And if you drag from right to left, 
any vectors that are within that selection box will be highlighted like so. So we're going to look at welding these vectors, but before we do that, we don't want to weld them just yet because we're going to end up losing all of the inside vectors on the E, the O, the O and the E here. So I just need to look at deselecting those. So to do that, I'm just going to hold down Shift. I'm going to select the inside of that E there, inside of that O, inside of the P, the O and the E. So now I've got all the vectors highlighted that I'd like to weld together, we're now ready to weld them. So to weld these vectors, we simply come over to Edit Objects and use the option to weld selected vectors. And so there we have the one continuous vector that we wanted. It's good to keep in mind that when converting script type text to standard vectors and then welding them into one continuous vector, where individual characters meet, there could be some inconsistencies in the vectors. For example, if we just zoom in to the O and the P here, you'll see that we've got little inconsistency here. And so this is where the tail of the O comes and meets into the tail of the P. And you'll see that where they've overlapped and been welded together, it's created this inconsistency. So we just want to make sure we go over all of these vectors just to clean those up. So to clean them up, we simply go into node edit mode. And easy trick here is just to simply delete the node. So I'm just going to right click, delete point, and zoom out just to see how that looks. Just to temporarily come out of node edit mode, I'm just going to click in the white space so we can take a look at that vector it's not too bad, I might look at removing this one also, so right click on that node, so going in there and right click and we'll delete that point, okay, so it's not too bad. Then we're going to come over and check for other areas, so let's come over here, okay, again where the C meets the T here, you'll see that we've got jagged inconsistencies there, so again, let's just take that node, delete it then right click on this node here and delete that point also. Okay, so here it's good to just check everywhere else. And you can see there that I think we're okay with all of the other overlaps there. So let's just use this option here to zoom to fit. Then we'll just go back into normal selection mode, click into the white space, now what I'd like to do is take the letter V and just increase its size. So with that selected, I'm going to select it again to put it into transform mode. I'm going to take this handle here and I'm just going to increase the height of that letter there. Then I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard. So I'm just going to nudge it over to the left, nudge it down a little. I want to bring that back up and over to the left there. Now the last thing that we're going to do with this text is just look at resizing it. So I'm just going to box select those vectors. I'm going to come over to Transform Objects, Set Selected Object Size. In this case we want to go with a width of 7 inches. I'm going to make sure Link XY is unchecked. I want to put in precise values for both the width and the height of this. So 7 in width, 1.2 for the height press apply, you'll see it's done that for me. I could go ahead and close that down. So now we could go ahead and click in the white space. Next I'd like to create our serial number text. So to do that, let's come back into the draw text option. Here we're going to type in serial number 00001. In this case, for the font, I'd like to use a single line font. I'm actually going to use this avant-garde font that we've got here. We're going to align that to the centre. We're going to specify a text height. So the height of this is going to be an eighth of an inch. We're going to type in 0 0.125, press apply. You can see it's been added there. And we could go ahead and close that down. So let's just zoom in on that text. I'm going to select it put it into transform mode and I'm just going to drag it up just so it's out of the way there. Now what I'd like to do here is I'd just like to increase the spacing between the letters that we've got in the word serial here. So to do that let's go back into edit text spacing and curve and come over, hold down shift to increase that spacing. I'm just going to click 
between each of these characters a couple of times just to increase that space in there. I might want to bring that one back. Okay, so I'm content with that, so let's just put that back into normal selection mode. Then we'll use the option here to zoom to fit. Now the last thing that I'd like to do is align the serial number to the lower right portion of the nameplate. Let's just zoom in over to the right hand side here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to align the number 1 in line with this letter E here, but I want the bottom of the serial number to be in line with this point here going across. Now having the smart snap options should help me locate that point where I'm lined up with the E and I'm also lined up with the points that we've got on this arc or this internal radius of this rectangle here. So to do that I'm going to select the serial number and select it again to put it into transform mode. I'm just going to grab the bottom of the number 1. Okay, Now you'll notice that we've got various lines appearing and this is all to do with our smart snap options so we're picking up points that you may want to align the text to. So in this case what I'd like to do is I'd like to align it to the edge of this E here and so I just simply follow the line down but I also want to wake this point up here and bring that across and here we can see now I've got that intersection where I'm snapped to the edge of the E and I'm also in line with the internal radius of that rectangle there so I can just simply click and put that in position and so there we've successfully aligned our serial number thanks to the smart cursor so let's use the option here to zoom to fit. So that completes the drawing stage for the vector phone nameplate. Now you'll find in the related videos to this tutorial there's a follow-up video that discusses the 2D toolpaths to cut the vector phone nameplate out. So let's go ahead and save the file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder you can find the file Vector Phone Vector Drawing. Press Save there and you can access that from the project folder.